This video provides a quick demonstration on how to create pivot tables as required in a lab 1.0 review for module one. So in part E of question two, you're asked to create pivot tables to create a contingency table, a contingency probability table, as well as two conditional probability tables for the data. So I'm gonna to go to Q2 data, the data that we're supposed to use for our probability table. And I'm going to select all of the data. So I select the table and then I'm going to hit insert, the insert ribbon, and I'm going to pivot table. And I'm going to do it from this table. So I have my table from which I'm gonna create my pivot table. I'm going to put this in the existing worksheet at the location that I want to. So I'm gonna put it over here underneath part E of this question worksheet. And I'm gonna hit okay. Now I've got a blank pivot table and it's uh, up to me to put in the information that I want. So the pivot table that I want to create is gonna be similar to the pivot tables that we see above. Um, so for the contingency table, I want party identification as my row headers and question answers as my column headers. So I'm going to do that here with my pivot table. So in my pivot table, I'm going to have party. My party identification is my row header and the question answer as my column header. <clears throat> now there's nothing in the middle yet because I don't have anything for values. So I'm going to put the question as my values. Okay, so there is a pivot table giving me counts. Now note here, I have 1065, whereas the question <clears throat> had told me that it wanted the registered voters. I can also see that I have a row that says NA. Now if I go back to my data, what I can see is that for registered voters, I've got both no and yes answers. So what I want is just the yes answers. I could filter this here, but that's not really going to do much for my pivot table. What I want to do is I want to apply the filter within the pivot table. So I'm going to add registered voters as the filter. You can see right now it's considering all of the selections. I want registered voter yes. So I go registered voter and I, in the drop down menu, I select yes. Now you can see that I have the 916 survey uh, people that were surveyed that were registered voters. And now I have a count of the Democrats, the Independents, the other, and the Republican. And this lines up with, my pre with, with the actual data. So this is a contingency table. Now <clears throat> I've done the first contingency table right here, that means. Now I want a contingency probability table. That's the next thing I need to do. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go the easy way here. I'm just gonna copy my first pivot table. And I'm gonna paste it down here. Okay, so now I want this to be probability table. That means instead of these values being numbers or counts of the, vote, of the registered voters, I want it to be a probability. So I, that's the values within the table. So I'm gonna go to the value drop down menu over here and I'm going to set my value field settings. So these value field settings, well, I got the count, that's good. That's what I wanna do. I don't want averages, max, mins, or any of that, but I can show the value. Right now it's currently having no calculation, but I can show it as a percent of the grand total. Now 916 is a grand total. So for a contingency table, I want it always to be the percent of the grand total. So percent of grand total is what I set it at. I go, okay. And now you can see I have 100% in the bottom corner and I have the percentage that were Democrats, the percentage independents, etc. And this will line up or, or match the um, contingency table I had right here. <coughs> now, one thing that you may be confused by right away when I, when I compared those two, note that my columns are in a different sequence to what I had above. So make sure that when you're comparing the results that you're paying attention to your column headers. Okay, so now I've done my contingency table, I've done my contingency probability table, and now I want con two, two conditional probability tables for the data. 
So I'm going to copy this continue, sorry, this pivot table one more time. <clears throat> and now what I want to do is I want to change these values to be conditional probabilities. So what I'm going to go back to is my count of questions, those values, and I'm going to go to the value field settings. And this time I want to show it as a percentage of. Now, if my condition is going to be the row headers, Democrat, independent, other, what percentage of Democrats said no? What percentage of Democrats said unsure? What percentage of Democrats said yes? Then I want it to be a percentage of the row total. So the row total. So now you can see it shows the percentage of the Democrats and you can for, for the answers no, unsure, and yes, and I have a grand total of 100% for each row. Note that it still gives me the grand total for each column. This really isn't very useful, so I'm just going to darken this because it, it's, it's really not useful to me. That said, I cannot delete it in a pivot table, or at least I don't know how to. I'm also going to label this uh, table here just so that I'm clear what it is. It's a conditional probability table with the condition being what? The condition is the party identification. Okay, now I'm going to copy my pivot table one more time to do the other condition. So this time I want to create a conditional probability table, but I want the condition not to be the party identification. I want it to be the question answer. So I want my column headers to be the conditions so that I would be looking at amongst those that said no, what percentage were Democrats, what percentage were independent, etc. So now when I go to my count of values, the value field setting, I want each value to be shown as a percentage of the column total. And that gives me a conditional table where the no, I get one group here, a subset here, 100% of that subset, 100% of the unsure subset, 100% of the yes subset. Now, again, gives me a grand total at the end here that's not very useful, so I'm just going to darken that so I remember to ignore it. And that's creating pivot tables that give us our contingency tables and our conditional probability tables. Ooh.